right, so uh, we're going to be going over kind of the basics of uh, the different types of gabions and gabion mesh, as well as uh, their applications, specifically uh, different civil applications and erosion control applications. So as far as the different types of gabion mesh, um, we offer uh, three main categories. We have our Giroflex, which are a double twisted wire mesh gabion basket. Then we have Juraweld, which is a welded wire mesh. And then we have our Juragar gabions, which are made from a polypropylene plastic geogrid. So gabions are uh, built to standard specifications, and those specs are determined by ASTM. So there's a uh, nationally recognized uh, standard as far as the thickness gauge of the wire, the strength of the mesh, uh, which really you know, makes it easy to substitute in different products as long as they are made to those ASTM standards. So there's a specific ASTM for the twisted wire mesh gabions as well as for the welded wire mesh and then also for the specifying of the fill as well as uh, installation practices as far as how high the lift should go, uh, how to attach um, the internal support wires, uh, where you should have diaphragms, etc. So our standard Juraflex baskets um, are going to come in what would be considered stock sizes. So the length on those is usually a three foot, four and a half foot, six foot, nine foot, or 12 foot. And then the width is either going to be three feet or four and a half feet. And then the height would be a foot, a foot and a half, or three feet. Uh, and then with mattresses, uh, that's going to be either a nine foot or 12 foot length, a six foot width, and then either a six inch, nine inch, or one foot height. And we can do uh, custom sizes on the Juraflex baskets, um, but it's rare that we do that. Uh, generally for Juraflex applications, uh, they're used, uh, or they're using the standard sizes that you see here. So with our Juraweld baskets, they traditionally have the same standard sizes as Juraflex, but all of our Juraweld baskets are made to order. So uh, we can easily be flexible on the sizing. Um, a Jurawell mesh is going to be a three inch by three inch square mesh. So as long as the dimensions of the basket are within those three inch increments, then um, you know we're we're fine with uh, doing that that custom sizing. So the different gabion accessories that are used uh, when you are building um, the basket, assembling the basket, especially the Juraflex basket, using a hog ring gun and hog rings uh, can save you up to 30% of your labor cost. So the twisted mesh baskets traditionally are assembled using uh, just tie wire and they're partially assembled and then you finish sewing uh, the seams on site. But by utilizing a hog ring gun and the hog rings, uh, you're going to be moving a lot faster as far as assembling the baskets. And then once they're filled, uh, it's a lot faster to close the lid uh, with the hog rings. Tie wire is just uh, rolls of wire that would be used for the internal supports or for tying up the seams on the Juraflex baskets. And then with the Jurawell baskets, uh, we utilize spirals uh, to assemble those baskets. So that top right picture is of a helical spiral and those just screw into the corner. So 
Um, as far as with the accessories that come with the baskets, the Durawell baskets are much faster uh, to assemble. And then the stiffening rods um, is the piece of wire in the bottom left-hand picture that has a hook on each end. And what that allows you to do is just hook onto the face and to the side panel and uh, gives you that reinforcement on the face to keep it from bulging as much. For the assembly help, uh, we have a couple different items. So um, the lid closure tool and corner closure tool are both used for um, you know, working with the filled gabion. So the lid closure tool allows you to grip the lid and the front of the panel and use it to wedge down that lid so that you can have a fully uh, filled gabion and then use the closure tool to put pressure on the lid to hold it down, allowing you to either do hog rings or tie wire across to get the lid closed. Uh, the corner is for getting two baskets and pulling them together. And that way you can use hog rings or tie wire to attach those two baskets uh, together at the seam so that you're creating a single uh, structure with all the baskets attached to each other. And one of our last um, accessories that we offer that help with assembly is our gabion guard, which is that bottom picture. And a gabion guard is a piece of folded uh, steel that goes over the seams or on the diaphragm of the baskets, allowing you to fill the baskets with stone from a bucket uh, without damaging the baskets itself. Um, you know, you're not having to straighten up the basket if rocks hit it, it's not bending it, it keeps its form and allows you to move much uh, quicker during the uh, filling stage of the baskets. So uh, now we're going to talk about some applications. So a traditional gabion wall is considered a gravity wall. You're using just a certain amount of mass of stone to hold back the hillside. So the general rule of thumb to get that mass calculation is that the bottom course of the wall, which in that top picture is gonna be the six foot by three foot section, that bottom course is gonna be two thirds deep as the height. And then as you go up, you can step the basket um, length or width in a foot and a half for every three feet you go up. So that you know when you're finishing at the top, you have a three foot deep, three foot tall basket. Um, the optimal layout uh, for the gabions is to have that length pointing into the hillside as far as you know having a, a secure structure and then as you're going up you would alternate uh, which way the gabions are pointing uh, which allows you to interlock those gabions and get more uh, structural support by having the seams overlap with each other. And while you can go up to 30 feet in height with a gabion wall, uh, just because of you know, bringing in so much stone, uh, you know, kind of the optimal cutoff uh, for a gabion wall uh, is gonna be 18 feet or less. Now, uh, one option that we see a lot uh, where people don't want to bring in a lot of offsite stone is a uh, gabion MSE wall. So an MSE just stands for mechanically stabilized earth. And uh, what you're basically doing is using a gabion face with some type of reinforcement behind it. Um, generally, that reinforcement is made from the same mesh that the gabion basket is made. Uh, we can actually have the basket have a tail on it uh, assembled at the plant so that uh, it's all one piece and uh, you have positive connection on that. Uh, but you can also util utilize polyester geogrid as that reinforcement. And then, uh, you know, one of the benefits of gabions in general, both in a gravity wall application as well as the MSC wall application, is because it's a basket filled with stone, um, 
it, it does have that open face that is going to allow a lot of the water to drain out. So you're not getting the hydrostatic pressure on the back of the wall like you would uh, with some of the traditional block uh, retaining walls. So those were the two main wall uh, scenarios. And then uh, the erosion control applications a lot of times will um, combine both civil applications and erosion control applications. So uh, we'll go through some of these and you'll see some overlap between uh, wall systems and erosion systems. So the bioswale gabions are used uh, as a stormwater runoff system. And basically what you're doing is containing stone within the gabion cage uh, to provide an inlet for runoff water to go. And so that allows you to filter the water through the stone. Um, and then you can, it, a lot of times it's also combined with uh, a tree or some type of vegetation system that will also provide further uh, filtration. And it's a great alternate to, you know, sewers where they're just pulling in the water and not filtering it. And it just allows, you know, that water to go on. So this is providing, you know, on a larger project, you know, multiple inlet points. Uh, it's not a big concrete sewer drain. It blends into the environment really well. And, um, you know, you're getting filtration at those uh, individual points. So channel lining uh, is basically where you're trying to prevent the shore or the uh, base of the channel from scouring. And, you know, a lot of times in the past, people have used riprap in these applications where they're just laying the stone down. But in high velocity waterways, you know, that riprap will uh, continue to you know, move down the channel, uh, especially if you have really high velocity uh, water flow. So the cages act as a containment unit. Uh, you can have them on the sides, on the side and the base. Um, it, you know, really just depends on, you know, the site specific conditions, but it gives you, you know, that, that building block that will contain that rip wrap and allow you to, um, you know, protect that shoreline of the channel. As far as bridge protection goes, um, you know, they can be used to, you know, shore up abutments um, on some smaller applications. We actually have uh, customers like on uh, farm access roads where they've built a gabion wall on either side of a creek and use that as the bridge support itself um, for, um, you know, light traffic going across just uh, farm equipment. Uh, and then, you know, you can combine it with building a gabion wall as well as utilizing mattresses uh, so that you're, you know, supporting the uh, embankment, but then also, you know, upstream and downstream, you can uh, incorporate mattresses to help prevent scour and any erosion that could eventually get to the bridge itself. With shoreline protection, um, you know, we, we have two different types of water that we usually work with. We have fresh water, which is going to be generally using our PVC coated baskets, which we have PVC coated in both the Juroflex and the Durawell. And then uh, for saltwater applications, that would generally be our polypropylene Duraguard gabions or um, our 316L stainless steel gabions. And, um, you know, just like a lot of the other erosion control applications, a lot of times this is a combination of a mattress and a gabion basket um, just to prevent any scour at the base of the wall and then having a wall go up so that you're you know retaining as much shoreline as possible. So 
So check dams are a useful way to reduce that water velocity. Uh, as you can see in the picture, you know, you can have a, a series of check dams. Um, those are generally placed straight across the channel or, you know, in a crescent shape with the open end upstream. And, you know, that allows you to slow down that water, let it filter through the baskets themselves. And you're also, you know, collecting any sediment or anything else that might be floating in that channel. Uh, you're collecting it with the check dam so that you know it can be removed later and it's not getting stuck inside your culvert. And those are usually uh, placed in conjunction with uh, posts to act as um, extra support to kind of help prevent that basket from moving. So kind of on the same theme with trying to reduce that water velocity, uh, culvert outlet protection. Uh, you know, you can see in this picture, the gabions were used to actually shore up the culvert uh, itself, but then also uh, having the, the channel at the discharge point being lined with gabions is gonna prevent that from eroding away where you're gonna have that really high velocity coming out of um, those outlets. Uh, the Duraflex gabions are used a lot with that uh, just because of their flexibility and being able to uh, cut and place different shapes on site. So with generic slope protection, uh, that's generally used uh, with just the Reno mattresses. And you know, all you're doing with those is just providing an encased riprap on top of the slope. Um, you know, depending on how steep that slope is, you may want to use uh, some earth anchors, which can be anchored into the hillside and then tied into the gabion unit itself. And then, you know, whenever you get above a one-to-one, -one, then you might be looking at more of a stepped gabion basket wall on the slope than just a mattress laid on the, the face of the slope. So uh, some of the other uh, geo products that we offer that can either be utilized with gabions or in similar applications. Um, we have our own line of uniaxial geogrid, biaxial geogrid. Um, so the uniaxial is used for retaining walls, uh, reinforced slopes, where the biaxial is generally used for more horizontal applications like highways, drives, access roads. Uh, we sell welded wire forms, which are basically a uh, four inch by four inch mesh, W4 gauge uh, L unit basket. So it's a face and then a base. And that ties in with GeoGrid and allows you to you know, utilize more on-site fill. Um, you can use them in a vegetated face by filling them with soil and lining the inside of the basket with fabric. Or you can you know, use a filter fabric, a welded wire mesh, uh, or the biaxial GeoGrid uh, as a liner in the basket and fill with stone for more permanent applications. Uh, we also have woven fabrics, non-woven fabrics, uh, geocells. Uh, we do some drainage composites, uh, sheet drains, items like that. And then we sell earth anchors. And our newest product line is our garden walls, uh, which are definitely gaining more popularity and can be used in conjunction with our uh, gabion walls to kind of add a, uh, you know, a, a green look to either all of the wall or portions of the wall to kind of break up all of the stone fill. So um, that is kind of a quick recap of all of our uh, uses. So 